This is a test of the city clock audio system.
Uh, let's go ahead, please, and call the Historic Preservation Board meeting of June 1st, 2023 to order. The invitation will be given by Chaplain Mulberry, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, led by Mr. Lee. Good evening, everyone. Father, we thank you once again for this day. We thank you, dear God, for your loving kindness and tender mercy. We thank you for all of your many benefits and blessings. We pray, God, that you will bless this board of membership. We ask for your divine directions and guidance. We ask for your instructions and in what things we must do to further the cause of the city, God, for the good of the people. We thank you for all that you're doing now for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be Madam City Clerk, if we can have the roll call. Certainly. Noted for the record that Mr. Sheffield is not present. Mr. Baton? Present. Mr. Hollister? Present. Mr. Jefferson is not present for the record. Ms. Pierce? Present. Ms. Vogt? Present. Ms. Rosa is sitting in for our absences. Present. And Chair Van Winsford? Present. We have a quorum, Madam Chair. Thank you. The appeals procedure and ex parte communication. The appeals procedure notices any person wishing to appeal any decision made by the Historic Preservation Board with respect to any matter considered at such meeting will need a record of the proceedings and for such purpose may need to ensure that a verbatim record of the proceedings is made, which record includes the testimony and evidence upon which the appeal is to be based. FS 286.0105. Ladies and gentlemen, ex parte communication at this time, please. No, 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 no. Um, I did receive a phone call from a member of the community in Iris this week. Um, I had a conversation with Lisa Walsh regarding it, and I do have a few comments at the end of the meeting if uh, that is appropriate. But apart from that, I have nothing to declare. Moving on to the approval of minutes for the May 4th, 2023 meeting. I believe you all received these in your email. Were there any adjustments, clarifications, et cetera, et cetera? If not, I'm looking for a motion to approve said minutes. No motion. Thank you. And a second? I'll second. Thank you very much. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. And opposed. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. The minutes of the May 4th, 2023. Historical board meeting are approved. Let's move on to public comments. Uh, please realize, of course, the speakers are limited to three minutes, and we will take no action on these items. And there, there is, by the way, and, and I feel as though this might be something to bring up just quickly, because we have had public comments lately, and um, while we welcome them, I do think it is important to present a summary of public comments. Um, wishes anyone wishing to speak should give their name, state if they are a resident, taxpayer, or business owner, and they will have three minutes. Cur curtsy and respect is the hallmark. Speakers are expected to address the board and not audience members and not engage in back and forth discussions that can deteriorate into argument, debate, or accusations. Having said that, we do, of course, welcome public comments. So I would like to open public comments. Seeing that hearing none, we will close public comments and move on to regular business, which begins with item A, HPB case 23-15, request for a certificate of appropriateness after the fact for exterior new siding gutters and windows and restoration of glass porch. The owner is Sven Bakken. The address is 608 Oak Street, Black Florida, 32177, and the parcel number is very long. Um, looking at staff comments, I see that it was mentioned that we should perhaps table this to the July meeting. However, we've also been given additional information 
Um, so how would you like for us to proceed, please? Um, the additional information that was, this is Lisa Walsh, planning director, thank you. The um, additional information that was received a few days ago addresses most of the comments that I had, the questions that I had of Mr. Backen. Um, the other, what I, 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 if the board so wishes, we can consider it tonight. It, it is my feeling that um, we have additional information. The applicant is here. I, I, I'm i interested, certainly, in hearing about the property. Do we disagree or would we like? Okay. okay. That would be a yeah. way again. <laughs> All right. Um, then I will start with the staff report. Um, per the master site file, the vernacular style residence was built in 19, 1882 and 1884, or built between those two years. The two story porch was removed and replaced with a one story Greek portico. The entrance was created with brick steps. During the 60s, 608 Oak Street was the Catherine Hall dormitory, and it was owned by Peter T. Miller, an attorney and partner in the law firm of Miller and Miller. The application request listed a number of things that they wished to do was namely uh, restore the accessory dwelling, started work on the shed in the backyard prior to the application. So that makes it an after the fact issue, which we can discuss in a little while. Um, they wanted to paint the accessory dwelling, replace siding and gutters, repair windows with similar glass, restore the front door back to its original appearance, add a new fence, paint the house and restore the glass porch. Um, the structures in the South Historic District requiring the Historic Preservation Board review, and some of the materials have been included, were included with the application, and there's a photograph of the uh, siding in your staff report, which the applicant is proposing to use hardy board siding to replace rotted wood. Um, some of these things, many of these items turned out to be things that can be addressed at the staff level or don't need a certificate of appropriateness because of ordinary maintenance. But the information that was initially provided was ambiguous and I needed more clarification. And so we had several um, communications via email about that. And so what I wanted to bring before you was the use of the hardy board. And I think that is it. If you let me bear with me, I'll go over this um, questions that I had sent the, in the uh, extra piece of paper that I gave you. When I asked him what, uh, what materials will be used and how the work will be done, will the end result be the same as the existing porch or the glass porch? And he says it's not in too bad a shape and will be clean, new window cutty and painted it will be as it was originally so that's something that that can be approved at the staff level what type of new fencing do you anticipate using that was the application that said install new fencing and he said the fence is not in too bad a shape it will be repaired in same materials as is standard cypress fence boards it's a, a typical section of um six foot high privacy fencing so that, of course, can also be approved at the staff level. Yes? No? Mm -hmm. Do you disagree? I, I don't disagree. Are, are we referring to the front of the property? Because typically it would be a four foot fence at the front of the property. You're right. It's. I uh, think it's at the front of the edge, the front edge of the property. So yeah, it would be have to be four foot instead of six. Um, yeah. Okay. So so. Um, all right, will the materials used for the shed be the same as the original shed? The shed will be painted and a part of the roof will be repaired as the metal sheets are rusted holes in them. The whole steel roof will probably be replaced later. The same with the house roof is old and poor, condi and in poor condition. It had a few places where the water was pouring in. It was temporarily repaired for leaks when I bought it, but plan is to install a new metal roof later. I think that's something that we would come back to the that street. Well, or you can say if he's going to replace like for like, we can prove that at this point in time. If the, if the roof is metal and he's going to replace it with metal, we can say yes. Would we have to, to charge the outlet you know, to come back? Yes. How much is that? Um, $200. Before. Well, if he's going like for like, I can approve it at the staff level. 
are we comfortable with the person we like for like at the staff level? Okay. okay. Your application states you plan to replace windows, sidings, and gutters with what will they be replaced? And he responded, the windows, they are time and cost consuming, will be restored. One or two might be too far gone due to rot and termite damage to be salvaged and needs to be new. Any new will be closest to original as possible, depending on what's available on the market. I, uh, go ahead. I, I would say board members would we like to see that come before us. Yes, I would. Agree. Thank you very much. I'm taking notes. Thank you. Um, the gutters, he will try to get hold of some old used materials or wood boards for this. If that is not possible, they will be in regular wood like pine or similar. I'm not sure what's on the house now. It may or may not need to be replaced with wood gutters. I've never even seen wood gutters. <laughs> Could I say something? I have a question. Of course. In, in reference to the gutters, I, I believe the, gut, thank you. the gutters are inside they're, and they're covered with wood. So you have the, the roof that comes down like this, and then right underneath, the gutters are all running inside, and then you have wood that goes all the way around. No. That. You know what they're, I'm talking about. It's kind of designed for older houses. Yes. What happens is that rock a little water. Right, of stuff. course, yeah. Okay. Um, so that sounds like a staff level thing if it is a wood gutter. Is that would you all agree with that? As, as, as long as it gets like for like where the gutters run back inside and the wood is right. replaced. Yes. But he doesn't say what's on there now. Yeah, that lead is what's on there. It is what's on there? He, yes, it's the gutters are run inside and then there's like wood and then there's like a truck and then we get to the roof where the gutters are and it's it's very uh, hardly designed. Okay. Um, Board, I'm not hearing any consensus as to come back to us. The applicant will be coming back to us anyway about the windows. I don't feel that it would be unfair for an update on the gutters. Would you agree? I agree. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and about the sidings, I want to go for the hardy boards here. They are durable and give the same appearance, so it's a good substitute, and therefore looking for approval on this. I don't like this too much myself, but do. Do I have to keep the overall call overall cost down to replace the sidings with original cypress boards is unfortunately not an option. The cypress siding boards can therefore damage the whole project. Hopefully we can keep the front facade sidings as original. It's not too bad to date. Wow, on that note, um, and, and let me, by the way, my husband is Dutch South African, so it's so important to me that I pronounce your name correctly. Is it? That's Billy. Yes. Sven uh, Bacon is uh, in Norway. And he asked me to come and uh, represent him. Uh, okay. At this point, if, if you would, please come on up and if you would give us your name and address and all that good stuff, please. My name is William Ennis. I live at 2114 President Street, uh, mostly Heights in Alaska. Thank you. I'm sorry. I kind of got blindsided a bit. I don't believe I knew this gentleman, so I just assumed he was the applicant, whereas I know you're Billy, and I assumed you weren't. Um, okay, what can you tell us about the project? Let's start there. And you know what? Let, let's talk about, since we've addressed so many other matters, that we've asked that if you would come back before us, let, let's talk about the Hardy Board, if you would. Yeah, well, uh, the uh, diving that's on it has a lot of uh, rod on it, and uh, Hardy board is a very durable, uh, modern uh, uh, material that can be applied and lapped, so you wouldn't be able to tell the difference once painted. And, and it will—it's very durable and lasts a long time. And he wants to replace the rotted cypress and uh, with the hardy board and make it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Anything else? Well, not at the moment, okay. um, but you know, hang around because we always have questions. Mr. Lee, the rate gets too far away. Um, can you come back up, please? Sorry, I wasn't quite quick enough. Okay, uh, this is just for clarification. I want to make sure I understand 
in the description of work that you're doing. So, um, so the house itself faces to the west, is that correct, onto Oak Street? The, the main entrance faces uh, Oak Street. Okay. And then there was a side entrance that uh, faces west. West, gotcha. With the, uh, uh, that added porch that has all the glass in it. Okay, so that was, that was my next question. So the porch that we're seeing in the application is on the west side of the house. Can I approach the uh, screen here? Behind it, this one is the west facing porch, and that's the front entryway facing right. Oak Street. Okay, and uh, let's see. So, I have a picture again here somewhere. Okay, so the picture in the lower right hand corner with the truck or van correct. there that's on the west side of the house. That is correct. Okay, is any of that visible from Oak Street? Where those? Uh, the um, if you scroll down a little bit, scroll up. I'm sorry. Uh, there you can see uh, on the left side of that picture. Oh, that's the same. Very van. right okay. over. Yeah, the same van right next to that porch. Very little bit of it. And there's a there's a uh, brick patio uh, that uh, with brick walk up. Uh, and then the uh, the entrance with the big the glass front doors is recessed a little bit back from the corner, so the the, the corner is kind of, kind of like a ninety recess. Okay. Now, where is the fence going that's being prepared? Is there a fence there? The the fence to, the, to, the, to the to the west of the truck. Oh, it's on the west side. The fence that you're talking about. Yes. On the so oh. that's that's the fence to the backyard, and it goes uh, from the house to the uh, west, and then it, there's a, uh, I believe there's a fence along the property line uh, with the next house on uh, Oak Street that goes north and south. And uh... okay, so the the on the left hand side of those windows, that's the fence that's there now. That's the fence that uh, has a gate to the backyard where the uh, shed is that he is. Okay. On. So it's, it's not a that's not a property line. Thing. No, that part is not. Interesting. And those boards that we see to the right of the van is that part of the same fence? Yes. Okay. And that's and that opening is the gate. Okay, and that extends down to the western west property. to the property line that okay. goes north and south. Correct. Okay. You have any idea of the age of that then? Uh, old. <laughs> okay. Um, but it's a it's, uh, feeder, so, uh, you know, it's not hard to, they don't rot, uh, so it can be cleaned and repaired. Okay. okay. Let me just take a quick look at your list here again, see if there's something else I need to I mean, I was trying to get oriented about where all this is located. Mr. Beaton, there's also a section of six foot fence. Can you scroll down with oh, oh, sorry. Okay. There's also another section of six foot fence here. Okay. That's the one that would have to go down to four feet. Okay. Yeah, that, that's on the east side of the house. It's a, a small section to the property line. Okay. And and it's pretty close to the property line. Yes. And it's the, the next property over is the house on the corner. Correct. Okay. All right. I think I'm I think I'm there now. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Beaton. Um, <clears throat> going back to the uh, the concept of party board siding, um, I believe the board would be behind me without me having to have a canvas them to say that as the historical board, that this would be a block where we indeed cannot also be the army board because the two don't really mix. Um, so I don't believe that I've heard of an occurrence recently where we said party board was something that we would put on a historic home in lieu of siding. And one of the questions that we always ask is, how much of the siding on this house is actually compromised? Like I said, don't run away. Uh, I can give you that uh, information after visiting. Um, I haven't really been uh, terrifically involved in the project. Uh, I've uh, 
but I've been there quite a number of times. Uh, the the uh, south, the north, east, uh, the east side on the north end of the building has uh, pretty much been stripped of the siding because of, that's where the roof leak was. And then going around the uh, north side of the building, the backyard side, there's areas where the damage leaked into the uh, the, uh, the cypress siding, probably uh, 30, 40% of that side has some damage to it. The uh, east side, I didn't, I haven't really looked at particularly, and the front, I went, I did go down and uh, look at the front, measure uh, the boards for them when he was in Norway and wondered what size they were. And uh, they, some of that is, is pretty good. Most of that is pretty good. So I say uh, 30%. 30%. percent yeah, that I can, I, I, that's with a reservation. Oh, I understand completely. And, you know, I should know this about you because I've known you for so many years. But are you a general contractor? I was a general contractor and I retired. Uh, I, I closed my business in 2010 after the recession, like so many of us did. And I opened up the Downtown Blues Club, which then, which was much more fun, which was much more fun, especially on the uh, occupation night. And uh, <laughs> Sven contacted me because he's a blues player. And uh, then he came to visit me, uh, and the blues club had already been closed down, so uh, he had seen me playing in de uh, all around and uh, playing blues. So he came over twice now and visited it and fell in love with Palatka because of me. And uh, and um, came and bought Peter Miller's old house, and he's trying to make a, a gem out of it. Tell about Palatka is all about, isn't it? That's right, Gem City. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Um, where, where are we going on this? Um, memory serves that we did uh, approve party board on the back of the house for a gentleman once. Um, in the historic know. district, yes. Um, because it was in the back of the house, wasn't going to be seen, and the cost of siding was astronomical. Just my, refresh memories. In my opinion on it is I am not qualified to report. It's a historic neighborhood, it's a historic home, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, when you buy them. It's a constant taking care of them all the time, and it is expensive. But I understand. Yes. And uh, most of the damage is on the rear. If that makes a difference, maybe there can be some. Mm -hmm. One of the things that always strikes me in this party board is it has a rough side and it has a smooth side. And using the smooth side with on the rear of the property, if that is what the board is leaning for, would certainly make it at least up here. Be a little more historic. Um, what we always deal with at this stage is what happens at the next property where we get this property held against us. Um, that's just always my consideration. I feel as though, as owners of historic homes, we have to steward them, plain and simple. Ms. Rosa. Thank you. Most recently, we have told others they cannot use money for it. Uh, the house on Miller Street, we told them that, that along with the fact that they wanted to use their own windows, one of the other things that mm. he's going to reflect like the like, but hardly what it's not like. But, and, but I do, I have incredible sympathy for it. I understand it. If someone loves this person wants to come under the earth and it's like that. That $15,000 underneath the house, which no one will ever see, but you know, it's a passion project. And um, I think it's hard for us because if we say yes to one person, then we have to say that to others. Mr. Well, Tony you said yes to one person. Um, a quick staff question. Um, in the staff recommendation, um, the, uh, there was a question asked about uh, some additional details about other than the Hardy board issue about what other materials can be used in repairs. Do you, does staff feel that that question has been sufficiently answered at this point? With the exception of the Hardy board, yes. Thank you. 
is fierce. <laughs> I mean, I can see both sides of it. I can understand that being on the back side of the house when it is one just sees the back side of the house. But then again, I understand that it is a historical home. You do want to keep it as historical as possible. Um, I mean, if you have approved that party board signing, I would have to ask for evidence of that because I, I do not know which the board that was granted previously. Typically, what our board deals with, and then please correct me if, if I'm wrong on this, but we're, we are charged with looking at things that can be seen from the room. Mm -hmm. Um, so things like you know, structures behind the property, not so much the interior of the property. Boy, we'd love to climb into that, but that's not our job. Um, so we're looking at you know the, the curve, so yeah. to speak. Yeah. And we also are charged with um, working with homeowners because historic preservation, yes, you bought the house, the price tag comes along with it, but if there are ways to help mm -hmm. a homeowner, exactly, we want to go ahead and help the homeowner. Without creating problems down the road that are going to fight us. Yeah, and I mean, if that's an area that's going to be fun to what are going to drive on, then we have a board might need to go out. I mean, you nobody know can see the back. There is no visibility from that. Excuse me, didn't you say it was on most of it was on the east side? Which no, uh, most of the damage is on the, uh, the rear and the rear uh, west corner behind the. Uh, at uh, window porch, this area right behind the window porch on this part of the, and then this part of the back of the house. Well, let me ask you this question. Um, if he was to do party board on the back side of the house um, and had other boards in the front or on the side that needed to be replaced, um, salvage. Uh, that or salvage or the um, Warnock over at St. Augustine carries that uh, Cypress uh, a chip lap that will match almost perfectly, but it's, you pay a lot of money for that. My concern is that we would say yes to the back and then maybe some might find its way around the front or the sides or something. Well, I can't speak to him for that, but uh, I don't uh, for him uh, for that, but I, I think that he would follow your instruction completely to the T and I think he would make a phone call or two that I'm sure he already has when he's not uh, understanding and needs clarification for your help and would there be a way to make a motion to accept the rear portion of the house party board and any future front exterior would have to get to the or actual cypress well, I mean, one, once again, the applicant is going to come back and see us again. Um, so, I mean, at this point, number one, I'm not sure if we actually have to make a decision. There are a lot of things that have been taken off the board for us today mm -hmm. that the applicant could certainly proceed with. So I don't feel that we need to be necessarily pressured. Um, I don't want to hold the homeowner up, but I don't feel like we are holding the homeowner up. Um, maybe having a board on the rear side of the house with that flat, Mm -hmm. Historical look, even though it is not a historical product, would be better than having the wood grain. Maybe asking for explaining to the homeowner that the, the sides and absolutely the front um, would have to be reclaimed or epoxy or fixed in some manner. Um, but you know, this that that is that's up to y'all, and absolutely a motion could be made. Mm -hmm. I would like to make a motion that maybe we wait on making that decision. Because um, I can see that this homeowner has a lot of work to do with the windows and the roof and all the other stuff. And maybe when he comes back, we can talk to him a little more. Uh, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Thank you. Typically, before comment. we have discussion, we can have a second. And, okay, but I'm sorry. Ms. Walsh, yes, ma'am. I, I just respectfully would like to remind the board that. We are also tasked with being consistent with the Secretary of Interior standards. And they don't call for party board. Yes, ma'am, but I don't believe that. Okay. 
What about cedar signing over Cyprus? They they have both, you know, both are available at a cost. Mm -hmm. um, those are questions that he would you know have to address when he gets back here. All right, if we are only looking at, and I, I know I banged this drum so many times, but if we're only looking at a 30% deterioration, that is certainly not 95%, which is what we work with in historic restoration. There are epoxies, things of that nature, but I could certainly give the information to Ms. Walsh that she could pass on to the homeowner to try to build this wood siding back up. Please don't get me wrong. Y'all, I am not caving on her. I don't like it as a product. Um, but it has been said that, that we have allowed rear exteriors of properties to have this in the past. Didn't like it at the time, don't want it to be a precedent. But again, I go back to what the board would like. We have a motion. Do we have a second on that motion? If not, it fails, and we start again. If I, re if I recall correctly, um, the person was going to take good siding off the rear of the building and use it on the other sides. So it was all matching. We just put hardy board on the back. I'm really not for hardy board. <clears throat> if that is the case, we have a motion. If we do not have a second, it dies. Do we have a second to that motion? And the motion was again to table that's <laughs> I took, I took down, correct me if I'm wrong, Ms. Vogue, but I took down motion by Ms. Vogue to wait to discuss the Hardy board until the homeowner comes back regarding other work. And I put windows, roof, et cetera, in parentheses. Yes, correct, because I'm not really for Hardy board, but I was trying to be, you know, wait till later until other things were done and see what then I'll second that. everything brings us. I'll second that and then they'll come back at the next board meeting for their choice. Okay, we have a motion and a second to basically table for more information. All in favor? Oh, I'm sorry, discussion? Mr. Beaton? So um, there's, in addition to the signing, there's uh, quite a number of other items. Those were taken off the table, I believe. Okay, so, so there's nothing else that the board needs to approve. Windows and gutters. Windows and gutters. Okay. And actually, they said that they wanted to replace the existing gutters with wood. So that's a life for life. Okay. So it would just be windows and um, siding. Okay. Are we all on the same page? We have a motion and a second. We have a discussion. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Um, and opposed. Okay, we'll see you soon. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much, much. y'all. Excuse me. When you come back, can you please bring a price of the different sightings with you? I will uh, forward that information and, and uh, we'll get, uh, get the work done for you. See you next time. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Um, moving on to regular business item B, which is HVB case 2316. A request for a certificate of appropriate use of greenhouse repair, replace, and restore its necessary windows, venting, molded siding, or driveway, and walkway, replace garage door, and change swing of the front door. The owner is Dennis Burn. 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 Yes. The address is 212 Dodge Street, Atlanta, Florida, 33177, and the parcel number is as noted. Hi, I bet you're Dennis. Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. Do we want to start with Dennis or do we want to start with staff comments? For the pleasure of the board. Um, you are there, if you would. Introduce yourself, give your address, please, sir. My name is Dennis Byrne, B-Y-R-N. My address is 212 Dodge Street, Black. Fantastic. Would you like to tell us a little bit about your project? <laughs> House I purchased last August is really a complete total rebuild from the foundation up. There's uh, the has the original floors. In the kitchen, 
and upstairs bathroom, the original floor is covered with plywood due to rot underneath. Um, dining room, front parlor. The two bedrooms upstairs, the majority of the wood boring salvageable that I'm going to be restoring. Um, the The house has a tremendous amount of wood destroying organism rot. I completely demoed the upstairs, took all the plaster and lath out. Um, going down to the studs and siding, I've come across half a dozen 16 foot two by fours that are rotted and need to be replaced. I've got one I can take my hand and squeeze it. Uh, there are two roof joists that I need to sister in to repair. Um, so I am slowly working and uh, trying to get a little bit done every day on redoing this house. God bless you. <laughs> Tony, you're historic home. It's not for sissies, is it? So, oh, it's uh, I'm having fun. Well, first of all, from all of us, welcome to the neighborhood. Did you move here recently? Back in August, yes. Fantastic. And uh, are you living in the house or? Yeah, I lived there as a back, I call it a family room in the back of the house that it's me and my dog. I live there. There is, so I managed to get the bathroom downstairs working. Uh, there was no hot water heater, no washer dryer, no air conditioning, no heat in the house when I bought it. Uh, well, again, the house is in, from the outside, the house does not look that bad. <laughs> Roof, I was told, was done back in 17 or 18, and the paint job outside looks, you know, looks decent, but on the other side of that pane on the inside, there's some pictures that I sent in of the uh, up a little bit more. Keep going. Oh. Uh, right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next, next one up. Keep going up one more. Yeah, right there. That, yeah, yeah. So on the left hand side, that is a picture of the original siding. Picture on the right hand side, there's a two by four separated. That's the next section where I am going through and patching and repairing the inside of the siding. Mm -hmm. On the left hand side, if you were to try to take that off, it would just crumble and break. And being the original siding, I know that it, I'm never going to be able to source it out. Um, I was able to get David Church to come over for a consultation, and I took him up and showed him this, and he very impressed the way that I've been preparing the siding here. If we can come back down some pictures. Yeah, right there, that one. So this is upstairs. Um, that's a crawl space in the back there, and where the red circle is, that's some original siding that was inside the crawl space. Now, Behind that, it looks like that was an addition that was put on the roof line changes, if I may, roof line changes as you step in down here. So these boards here are not removable, but this is original siding that was inside running across here, also on the back. I mean, across this wall, there's one bottom piece there that I left in. But when I had the foundation work done, I was able to pull this siding and they were able to use it, reuse it on the outside. That, you know, that siding's never seen the light of day for God knows how many years. And now I'm repurposing it for rotted stuff outside. So we love to hear that. Yes, I, I'm planning on keeping the original siding, doing whatever I have to do to it. Keep it repaired. I don't see many houses in the neighborhood with regular siding. Thank you for that, Mr. Byrne. Um, 
So, and, and this is absolutely out of my business, but it sounds like you know quite a bit. Are you your owner contractor? I was state licensed alarm contractor. I owned a house for 27 years down in Deerfield Beach. Um, I have a lot of resources in the construction industry that I'm able to talk to for uh, bouncing ideas off of. of uh, with the upstairs stripped down like this, one of the things I'm going to be doing is tying the framing all together with hurricane straps. Mm -hmm. So up under here on both sides, where the wall studs come up, I'm going to be tying it down to the top board. Where the roof studs come down, I'm going to tie those to the top cap. Where the roof joists come up to the ridge board in the middle, we're going to be taking hurricane straps, tying all that together. Uh, you know, what I'm seeing here is a hundred year old plus house with hundred year old nails and in the middle. Not as tight as it was. Absolutely. It sounds like you've all known over the home. Um, that's fantastic. Would you mind um, if we allowed staff to go ahead and do their presentation? Absolutely. Thank you so much. And I'm sure we'll be asking you questions in just a moment. But for now, I'm just... Thank you. Ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. As noted, this is um, a home at 212 Dodge Street. The applicant has um, submitted a request to paint the exterior, repair, restore, and replace windows as necessary, change the swing of the front door, repair molding and siding, repair the driveway and walkway, replace the garage door, repair the fence, and repair the porch. The structures in the South Historic District and some repairs, such as the replacement of windows and window frames or sashes, and the garage door replacement require historic preservation board review. You have the photos. Um, as shown in your staff report. Um, again, many of these items can be approved at the staff level, including the paint um, and repairs of glass and that sort of thing. But if there's replacement of windows that needs to be done, that has to be like for like, or it goes before the board. Um, the other thing that is of main concern to staff is the replacement of the garage door. Um, that there's a photograph of the existing door and then a um, proposed material to build a new door, garage door out of. And it looks more like a barn door rather than what was on there before. I, I don't know if that's a sufficient concern for the board. Um, and as far as the fencing is concerned, it's a picket fence in the front of the yard that needs lots of pickets replaced. <laughs> and as long as that's like for life, that will also be approved at the staff level. Um, as well as the front porch coming through flooring. Um, oh. Ma'am? Sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, the repair of the driveway, walkway, molding, siding, fence, and porch can be classified as ordinary maintenance as long as the siding is not hardy board and do not need a certificate of appropriateness and can be approved by staff if needed. If the proposed replacements and repairs will not materially impair the architectural or historic value and take away from the character of the district, and if there is sufficient information to make this determination, staff recommends the board approve the proposed changes. Thank you very much. That was my next question. Was thank you. Um, at, at this stage, could we go through the various requests and see what is Okay, as far as maintenance is concerned, okay, as far as like to like, okay, as far as staff approves, or would it be better to open up to public comment because you can't let anybody else do that? You should probably do that. Okay, <laughs> let's go ahead and open up to public comment. Hi. <laughs> Seeing that here, it's sorry, Sunny. <laughs> I have to be a little bit newer. We will close public comment and come back to the staff um, and ask what. Parts of this application should be possibly aired out or sorted out via staff. Got it. Um, the exterior paint is something that can be done at the staff level, unless you disagree with the colors chosen that were in your staff report. Um, the repair and restore the windows is something that can be done at the staff level as long as it's like for life. If the windows have to be replaced, then of course they have to be wood frame and not. Uh, aluminum or vinyl or anything like that. Changing the swing of the front door, staff level, 
and actually I'm not even sure that that's an issue. <laughs> um, repairing molding and siding as long as it's not hardy board. That can be done at the staff level. The driveway and walkway can be done at the staff level. Mr. Byrne has expressed as his intent to simply dig up the existing bricks and reset them like they're in different, they're not level. Um, Third street. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like the street I live on. Right. Right. Replacing the garage door is something that should go before the board. Repairing the fence and the porch is something that can be done at the staff level. Thank you very much, Ms. Walsh. Um, so what we're looking at, ladies and gentlemen, is that if we agree that the items, with the exception of replacing the garage door, to be left to the expertise of our city staff, we'll go ahead and just address the garage door at this time. You look like you wanted to say something when she mentioned replacement door. Windows, was there something you wanted to Yeah, on the windows, if we could come back down. Thank you. Um, yeah, right there. Those two pictures there. So this is up on the second floor where I started the demo. Top pane got broken. We'd taken the bottom sash out. And after we got all the demo done, I leaned out the window and I took a razor knife and cut the hundred years of paint that was sealing it. And I went to pull the top sash down and it just snapped and broke. It was rotted. Um, I could not find anybody to build one. So down at the bottom, I equipped the garage and I bought a bunch of tools and took a lot of measurements and I built those two sashes at the bottom. And that so what you see at the top there, I ended up building the entire window frame and the top and bottom sashes and reinstalling the law of unintended consequences. But when I took the sashes to Bennett for glass, the original sash was 16th of an inch glass, new ones are eighth of an inch with the heavier glass the top sash wants to pull down about four inches. There's not enough weight. So I have to now increase the weights on the top sash to be able to get it to sit in place. But that's the kind of work that I'm doing to restore the house. Thank you. With other comments on pulling the um, replacing of the garage door for our benefit to discuss and allowing city staff to work with the applicant on the other issues? Mr. Beaton? The uh, existing garage door is metal, is that correct? Yes, that's a, an aluminum door that, that's the inside where the extra bracing is just totally all ripped off. They had tried to patch it and there are holes on the outside where the bracing is just ripped through again. It's a swinging door. The opening measures exactly eight by eight. Um, I think the next picture down, yeah. So on the right hand side there, that is some um, one by six and some one by eight parkwood pine that I have reclaimed from another house in the neighborhood. Um, and that's what I plan on building the barn door out of, keeping it a natural wood finish. Um, okay, so are you proposing a single swing door to one side or the other? Or are you proposing two doors? No, I'm proposing a single eight foot by eight foot door that's going to be a sliding barn door. You know like the sliding feature? Uh, <laughs> I've seen that in, in the barn. I, I was going to say there's one on my garage. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 compared to the aluminum door that's there, the sliding <laughs> barn door, the barn door appearance will be to the period. Whether it's sliding or swaying, is that really that much of a deal? Sitting back off the road as far as it does? Yeah. I just prefer the sliding because of the way the swinging drags on the concrete away over it now. And mm -hmm. what uh, what hardware are you proposing to go on the front of that? Well, the door itself uh, is probably going to be like the one on the, the right bottom there, right? Looking at a bunch of slats, making a foot with a simple Z across it. Um, and the hardware that you would see 
on the street would be similar to what you have here, except the door would be eight foot eight foot wide instead of you know yeah. look like three foot or something. Now, when I had David Church over, I took him out and asked him about this, and he liked the idea of as far as the structure supporting the weight of the door, he said there's no problem with that. I don't know, just the thought, uh, Larry, if, if the hardware was different, maybe it was painted the same color, you know, as a garage, so it didn't appear to be like an interior barn door type look. Would that be something that you think would be yeah, I'm, maybe work better? Yeah, I was just kind of curious, and since we don't have any time drawing or anything, just kind of curious to see what it's going to look like. I guess, you know, my, my perspective is the, the metal door, I, I can't believe, mm. you know, all that old and pretty much falling apart. And, and while I, I don't feel like this structure is located, you know, in Elkton somewhere, um, I, I do think that, that the garage is kind of the least of our worries. Um, I feel like we we sort of have in our midst a model home here. Because he doesn't want to do all these things that we're always like, you can't do that. You know, you got to respect his home. You've got to put in life for life and you've got to keep it historic. And um, I don't know, we're looking at this brush and we're saying, wow, why is this? Is, it's freaking intense. Well, I'm, I mean, I think it is, it, it's something we definitely need to consider because it's clearly visible. Not just very So mm -hmm. that's the reason I was asking the question. And, and, and I'm sorry, Mr. Beebe, please. He's never be able to see, and you're my favorite person that I would ever be like, thank you. <laughs> that I would ever be like, being me or normal. I'm just not like that. But you know, I'm thinking of, of other garage door alternatives. You know, the thing you click and the whole thing pops up and down. And like, I've seen other barn doors in the neighborhood. I did not take pictures of them. Hinge, double hinge, where they come out this way. Yeah, that's uh, true. Yeah. Same. Same exact Z design, except it was just painted the same color as the barn. Um, I thought the natural wood here would look much nicer than paint, painting it. Maybe, maybe what we're objecting to is the fact that, that like this particular door configuration is something that Pottery Barn sells a lot of nowadays, and we just can't see it on a historic garage. Or any, well, no, no, no. Again, this was just an example of a barn door. I'm going to be building the door myself. I'm not buying something like this. I'm I'm using this reclaimed wood to build it from scratch. So you would be making it like those double door. You'd be yes, yes. The door, but like the old time double doors. I've seen them. Now, I, I think I did submit an email okay. a architectural sketch of a door. Um. I don't know if we have that photo. Yes. Um, would you put the Z bar on the inside of the door so that the exterior is just kind of vertical, which makes it less. I mean, I grew up in a house with closed doors, but I grew up in New England where that was what you had. And if you were trying to recreate something that was from the 1700s, I just think mm -hmm. a simple vertical board. I can do that. That is not a problem. Put the Z on the inside because it does support the door. And I understand how it's constructed. I just think simple is usually better oh, than. Not a problem. Yeah, okay, thank you. Ms. Reza, that sounds a lot like a motion. I make a motion that um, we ask that we see support be put on the interior of the door and that the door is just a beautiful reclaimed wood in its natural state without the support from the front. Thank you very much. We have a motion. We have a second. I'll second motion. We have a motion and a second. Do we have a discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. So this was not just a motion on the garage door design. This yes. was covering all the items. Well, actually, this was a motion on the garage door because as staff presented to us, the rest of the application was actually a on the place. 
Yeah, repair, replace, like for like, things that, that kind of didn't have anything to do with us so much if staff could take care of it on a staff level. And just to reiterate, Mr. Deaton, it was painting the exterior of the house. Um, and if we would like to chime in, but um, in looking at these particular colors, we're looking at, to my mind, something that staff could say these are historically appropriate. Um, we were also looking at repair, restore, and replace windows as necessary, um, which the applicant stated that, you know, like for like, he's gone with some good effort to build windows as opposed to, as staff said, we would not be considering aluminum or things of that nature. Changing the swing of the front door, really nothing to do with us. Um, molding and siding again, like for like, uh, no hardy use, no other type of composite materials. Um, driveway, walkway is, is really just reseeding brick. Mm -hmm. um, repairing the fence, we're looking at a picket fence, which we all love at great height. Um, the porch, again, like for like, mostly replacing boards, things of that nature. Do I have that? Pretty much, okay. Um, does that answer your question, Mr. Yes. Reed? Would you like to pull anything for consideration? No. We can certainly do that. Yes, um, I have a question about the hand colors. Sure. Did this, the photo, what is no. the photo? No. Okay. That was a, the, if you look at the color that you okay. had up there, that's much lighter than what you see in the picture. Okay. Red is the red. <laughs> red is the and, red. and the red is the blue. <laughs> so yeah. the picture that shows on the house with the red and the, uh, the, red and the yellow, if you can pull that back up. I asked my neighbor across the street what he thought of my colors before I submitted. And his comment was, are you are you giving everybody sunglasses with that? Yeah. Then I asked my neighbors who moved in right beside me, Beth and Casper, and he looked at the yellow and red and goes, remind me of McDonald's with the oranges. That's, that's my so that's when I went back and toned them down and turned okay. the yellow down and darkened the red up. So I'm sorry if that's and then they will be double checked to make sure they are historical flush for that time period. All right. Are we feeling comfortable with our decisions? Fantastic. That's good luck. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and thanks for all your hard work. Absolutely. We need more people coming and doing their work. Well, thank you. Thank you. Huh? Saving the wood windows. Okay. I'm sorry? Yeah. Saving the wood windows. All right, moving on to agenda item five, public recognition of historic preservation month. Madam Chair, would you like me to read the proclamation issued by Mayor Korea and the members of the Colossus City Commission on May 25th, 2022? I think that would be wonderful and appropriate. Thank you. <clears throat> City of Palaka, the proclamation. Whereas the National Trust for Historic Preservation raises awareness for historic preservation during the month of May, whereas historic preservation is an effective tool for managing growth and sustainable development, revitalizing neighborhoods, fostering local pride, and maintaining community character while enhancing livability, and whereas historic preservation is relevant for communities across the nation, both urban and rural, and for Americans of all ages, all walks of life, and all ethnic backgrounds. And whereas the historic buildings, churches, and homes of the city of Palaka help make our city unique and provide links with aspirations and attainment of the city's pioneers. Whereas the buildings constructed in the 19th and 20th centuries contribute to an appreciation of our heritage. And whereas it is important to celebrate the role of history in our lives and contributions made by dedicated individuals and helping to preserve the tangible aspects of heritage that has shaped us as a people. Now, therefore, I, Roberta M. Freya, Mayor of the City of Palaka, together with the members of the Palaka City Commission, do hereby proclaim the month of May 2023 as Historic Preservation Month in the City of Palaka, and urge everyone in our community to participate in historic preservation efforts. And witness whereof, I appear unto set my hand and cause to be affixed the official seal of the City of Palaka this 25th day of May in the year of our Lord, 2023. Signed, City of Palaka by Robert M. Correa, Mayor, attested by the City Clerk, Daniel Kern. Thank you. 
Mm -hmm. And I just have to say thank you all for your efforts. Historic preservation would definitely not be the same in our community without the efforts of this sort. So I'm very pleased to tell you that, and most of you know you were there, but this proclamation did pass unanimously by the Black State Commission. So thank you again for your efforts. Thank you. I don't think we could do what we do without you. Mm -hmm. So it goes both ways. All right. Would we uh, like a photo of the board, maybe surrounding Mr. Beaton? I think that would be lovely. Um, can we get to the end of the Awesome. Um, moving on to agenda item six, um, staff and board comments. Staff, comments? I have no further comments. That was it, essentially. Mm -hmm. Thank you. May I make a board comment? Yes, ma'am. Um, a long time ago, I believe, well, I don't believe, I know that the city of Black had a brochure. Um, and what it basically said was, so you have purchased an historic building, now what? Um, this brochure has not been around for 15 years. I don't know if we could ever lay hands on a copy. But I would like to suggest that we come up with a similar brochure that, that could be given to homeowners throughout all of our historic districts that said simply that, in the nicest possible way, you own a historic property. What now? Um, I feel like it's something that we should not put upon the city staff to do because city staff has enough to do. Um, but what I would like to suggest is we create a brochure, which is basically in the format of frequently asked questions. I'd like to paint my house. I'd like to replace my roof, whatever, whatever, whatever. And I feel like we have enough expertise on this board to be able to, for a couple of us, to volunteer to assist city staff to put together this brochure, which would be as inexpensively done as possible. We don't need shiny, we don't need photos, um, but to be able to assist staff in making this happen so we can get it out to homeowners. How we get it out to them? I don't know. Water bill, realtors, door to door, whatever. Um, but I'd really like to see this happen because I feel as though a lot of homeowners are coming into our area. A lot have been here for years. A lot just say, well, I don't need a permit because they're not going to catch me. Um, this is an informational piece, not, not a abusive thing. It's a, we need you to help us keep our heritage and our beautiful properties. So I'm hoping that one or two people, and I'm not going to look y'all in the eye, but I already have my mind who would be fantastic, but if anybody would like to volunteer and say, yes, I'd like to help the city create a brochure, that would be wonderful. I, I didn't do it, I didn't do eye contact. <laughs> would anybody else be interested? I'll help that Okay, so Brianna, Patty, I'm not going to mind her manage all because that is certainly not my job. But don't y'all think that this is something that we will be able to do? And don't you also agree that we can't just put it on both of you? It needs to come back to us to, to review a workshop. I think that sounds like a great idea. Do I need to do anything else? We need some motion. Perhaps the uh, oh, you know what? Boy, you said that and get some feedback um, from you. In regards to you said to what you think you know would help with that. Like what sure are the frequently too. asked like questions? The things that yeah, the frequently asked questions and that can help you. Okay. Okay. Thank, right. thank you. So you know what? Let's go for it. Let's make a motion that we lead a bit of the charge that the historic preservation board put together a brochure for homeowners explaining what to do if you find yourself living in a historic home. Who would like to make that motion? I'll make the motion that we come together as a board and collaborate to make a brochure of Welcome to the Neighborhood. And you're the frequently asked questions. Don't you dare. Let me go and ask a question of what Mr. Nick said on the only end. That's fantastic. We have a motion and a second. Second. Thank you, Ms. Rosen. Fantastic <laughs> discussion, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Good idea. All in favor? You should have. Aye. 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 The motion passes. Thank you. I think this is exciting. Um, all right. On that note, that is the end of our agenda. And yeah. item seven is adjourned. Would anybody like to jump up and then leave us in adjourned? Can I ask just a oh, question? Sorry. 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 <laughs> Ms. Walsh, uh, are you going to receive a draft of the survey before the actual one goes into? 
Thanks, Tom. I have received a draft at the beginning of May, but it was only probably about 60% done. And I reviewed it mainly for um, grammatical errors and typos and things like that. Um, it follows a very similar format as to the existing survey. Okay. And they've been working on it diligently. And it was due yesterday, but they also have lost staff as have as has our department. Um, and so they asked for a two week extension. And at that point in time, it will be the final. It will be a final. I was just, I, I, I don't have the time to, <laughs> to review it property by property, but I'd just like to take a quick look at it one day if you've got a draft. I can send you what was sent to me in okay. early May. Okay. I'd just like to kind of take a look at it. Okay. All right. Because um, as you're well aware, the uh, existing one has issues here and there, which are, is only to be expected because it's only as good as the resource material that you can okay. get. And as you well know, sometimes you find a lot on a house, sometimes you don't find a great deal on structures. Right. But uh, yeah, I was just curious to see what resources, and by the way, they did not ever reach out to me for any question. Okay. Not that that's any big deal, but I know that you had given them my contact. Right, questions. and I know that the the their task was not necessarily to go back through house by house. Their task was to compare what was now eligible to be a contributing structure. Gotcha. Because obviously, since the original survey, there's a lot more structures that are now considered right you know, and contributing. And they've also identified the uh, structures that were demolished. Excellent. Or they suspect were demolished because right. they're not, <laughs> you know, what was comp they compared the Sanborn maps and what mm -hmm. exists now. And yeah. Very good. Excellent. All right. Thank you. Mr. Hollister. I, I, I have a question. Um, the North Historic District doesn't match up with what the city says and what the state says. Oh, good grief. This is this is like a total workshop. I don't know. <laughs> How do you like it? So because there's people that are, I guess, paying taxes or their tax money is going to the, the fund, but they're not eligible. To get I, I think, sir, that those are two different areas. One is a CRA or community redevelopment area, and the other one is the historic district. So the historic district pays no additional taxes based on being in a historic district, only if they are within a CRA. Okay. And there are actually no additional taxes within a CRA. It's actually the same property tax, but what happens is the difference between the base year that the CRA was established, mm -hmm. let's say if it was 1980 or 90, let's say 1990. So whatever the tax level was at 1990, and whatever it is now in 2023, that difference between the two goes back into the CRA funding, into that trust fund. And that's what is used for various projects within that district. Yeah. That money can only be used within that district. Yeah. And, and then we have actually gone back and forth for years and years because the historical district doesn't add up to the CRA and houses are disenfranchised, but they believe they belong. And, there is simply no easy fix. I live in the South Historic, but my tip is the center. Mm -hmm. Right. And I live in the North Historic, but my is the Central Business District. Right. It's it's a question of overlays that, for whatever reason, did not match. And okay. Yeah. yeah. So it was confusing to me. So I yeah. Madam Chair, mm -hmm. the, the map that I pulled up is the map from the city's website that shows the difference in, in color. And shows where the tip district and the north historic overlap. Um, mm -hmm. And there's a legend down at the bottom so that you can tell the difference, just as a resource for anyone that may be confused by the two different mm -hmm. uh, historic yeah. districts in the north. Thank you very much. And um, yes, it, it does help clarify, but it, it doesn't answer the question that, that frankly none of us can answer because we weren't here at the time. Mm -hmm. um, thank you. 
Somebody asked me, I asked them. Absolutely. Um, but you're absolutely right. It is, it is very confusing. Um, Okay, all right. Um, other board comments or anything of that nature? Otherwise, I'd be looking for a motion 